Tom. Yeah. You come from a family of medical people, diverse people, and here you are, a math professor. How did that happen? How did you become a math professor? It was not the intention. I, I was programmed from, let's say, early on to be an MD. Yeah. Well, my dad says, do you want to be a dentist? Because he was a okay. dentist. I said, no, I don't want to stare in someone's mouth the rest of my life. <laughs> well, then you can be an MD. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. And so I prepared for that. I mean, I knew from day one when I entered college that that's what I was going to be. I took math from Gordon Hare, and Gordon Hare had a really neat mm -hmm. ability to, well, his writing was flawless. He would write cursively on the board, and I would, wa in cursive, and I would watch that happen. So he'd lay out a proof, and you know, that was, it's just art, it's beautiful. I mean, the logic and everything just fits together. Theorem, and he'd prove that theorem, and, and that was just fun. But of course, I knew, uh, you know, I wasn't going to use that at any time in the future. And so I thought, well, okay, I'm a chemistry major, I'll take a math minor. In retrospect, I looked back and I took absolutely just enough biology to satisfy the entrance requirements for medical school. That should have been a message to me, but it, it didn't get through because I knew what I was going to do. At the end of my junior year, Gordon Hare came to me and says, why don't you add a math major? I thought, oh, that looked cool on my diploma. I'll never use it again. So I did. So graduated, got married two days later, two days later headed to Loma Linda University. By the time classes started, I had already said to myself, you're not going to practice this. Now my wife says, and I don't remember this, she says, you came home the second day and you said, this is just not for me. But I said, okay, I'll stay the quarter or the term to, through December. And uh, so I did, uh, hoping to catch fire. But it just wasn't me. It wasn't for me, you know. When I go to a physician or a dentist or whatever, I like somebody who's excited about what they're doing, and I utterly wasn't excited. Just looking, looking ahead, I couldn't, I couldn't see that. Teaching had never entered my mind. Hmm. Not one iota of teaching had entered my mind. In fact, if you had said on the day that I graduated, guess what, you're gonna be heading to graduate school for your career in teaching, and within uh, seven months, I would have said, what are you on? What are you taking? <laughs> what, I mean, this is 1968, okay? <laughs> that, that, I mean, that's just, that's just what, what one would, would do. And so I, I went to graduate school, and I ended up here at Walla Walla, and, and you know, Gordon Hare hired me. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up here. Yeah, I mean, it's, I look back on that and I think, how did that happen? Yeah. Wow, but it seemed to, it really seemed to work. Yeah, and you have a long family history here too. In the valley and at, uh, at Walla Walla, yeah, yeah. I, I do. Both both sides, sort of. My my uh, mother actually uh, started in the grade school and academy, which were connected right with the college in in in, in the early days. Mm -hmm. This is in the late twenties. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My dad graduated from Walla Walla. He had a a sister graduate from Walla Walla. A brother mm -hmm. attended mm -hmm. some. I mean, my, both my sisters graduate from here. I, I had no choice. <laughs> yeah. In your teaching, you developed a deep and abiding interest in the history of math, which takes you into all kinds of other disciplines as well, the interconnections of various disciplines. How does that work? Well, yeah. You know, I, I have my, always have had my hands in 
mm -hmm. fingers in many pies mm -hmm. in many directions. And I like to know where stuff comes from. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes you present a math theorem and you present a proof and it just comes out of nothing, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like ex nihilo, there it is, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it just happens. And I like to know who, who was involved in this, how, how, do, how much do we know? Mm -hmm. I like to read and, and understand where this stuff comes from. And mm -hmm. so I really enjoy attaching a name or, oh, by the way, this is where this comes mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. you know. and. Uh, I think that gives students something to hang something on every once in a while. And oh boy, another day, another theorem. Oh yeah. boy, I don't know why they don't find it exciting, but <laughs> but but you know, all by itself. But if you attach it, if you give it a little bit of context, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, connections. Yeah, and one of the results is your course in science and the arts. Uh, well, honors. Class. Yeah, you know, I I was. A faculty member of the of the honors committee, mm -hmm. and this was about 1990, mm -hmm. 1991, and I always say I was at the wrong place at the wrong time yeah. because uh, Terry Amont, she presented to the committee, uh, she wanted to start this thing called science and the arts, and you know where two people would team teach, somebody with interest in the sciences and somebody with the interest in the arts would team teach a course that would kind of kind of marry these two. And she said, and I would like Tom Thompson to to help out with this. And you know, I'm sitting there thinking, maybe she came to me earlier, I don't remember, but I just remember in committee that, that all of a sudden, wow, I hadn't thought about that. And, 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 and here was a chance to kind of put that all together in mm -hmm. some sense. And, and boy, was that scary and was that fun. Yeah. I mean, right. it was it was absolutely, for me, it was a life changer. How so? Well, I got to, uh, I got to read very broadly. I mean, I got to, I had to, okay? <laughs> it was terrifying. I mean, here I am. He's a mathematician. What does he know about any of these other things, you know? And, yeah. and so I, I just, I had to read widely, but I, I like all those connections. Mm -hmm. So the history is crucial. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yes. And, 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 and then you look at how these things play back and forth. You know, in the science and the arts course, mm -hmm. one of the connections is geometry. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, but I got to think about at least geometry and how mm -hmm. that how that played a role mm -hmm. uh, in art, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, artists in you know the, the, the 16th century who are who are uh, using certain kinds of perspective where they actually put a something on the on their art mm -hmm. on a on a picture they they paint this object and you say what is that object. And if you go stand up next to the painting at a certain angle, you can see, oh my, from this perspective, that's a skull. You look at it straight on and you say, what is that thing? But these, these folks had discovered that kind of uh, business between seeing and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And that all interests me because it's, it's science, it's mathematics, it's art, and it, it's really cool. Music fits in here somewhere, doesn't it? It does. Um, and I took the requisite four years of piano lessons. Um, I can still play most of my last recital piece. I sang all through high school, you know, in the choir yeah. and so on. I only sing in large groups. <laughs> And, you know, it's not that I have a good voice, but I have a loud voice. <laughs> and I was called a bass section leader, so <laughs> I'm not sure what that all means. But anyway, it was yeah. fun. And, yes. and then one can see, and you know, it's, it's not a secret that sometimes mathematics and music go together. Sure. And so uh, I, I found myself in, in, in those two worlds, and that was really a lot of fun. You gave your distinguished faculty lecture 
on your major interests in sharp uh, shape and dimension. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about how that works and how that figures into well, your thinking? Well, I wanted to try and convey to a general audience a little bit of, I mentioned earlier, this geometry in n dimensions. You know, we think about space. You look at, the, at a room. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the universe? Well, you just, you sit and you watch the walls move back mm -hmm. as if on tracks. And you think that's, that's the shape of the universe. That's what it is. It looks like just like this room, only it's really, really big. Well, it turns out that it's not quite that easy. In fact, there are several models and there are, there's evidence for this model and there's evidence for that model and we think this works and maybe that doesn't. It's a little more complicated than that. I mean, it's, uh, we call it space-time mm -hmm. continuum. Mm -hmm. It's not Euclidean. It's not right angle geometry in some sense. And so I wanted to kind of convey that and then see what kind of implications that might have. Uh, you know, there's lots of technology that actually arises in n-dimension geometry. Mm -hmm. uh, communications. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll use a fancy phrase called error correcting codes. Now that doesn't make, make any sense, but when you use a computer and you type things and it appears on the screen, those signals have to get there and they have to get there flawlessly or what you type doesn't appear on the screen. And, 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 and that, gets, that gets corrected on the fly, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that's all mathematics, actually. Mm -hmm. That's how it's put together. It's, it, it was uh, essentially discovered in the late 1940s. And, and of course, all kinds of new, new kinds of, of, of those kinds of applications. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to kind of convey a little bit of that to push people to thinking beyond what we think of as three dimensions and say, what does this allow us to do? You have a reputation on campus as sort of a legendary tough teacher. You do all this in good humor, but what is this toughness all about? It's hard for me uh, because I know I know I overstep some balance once in a while. I can get really serious. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it can be, and, I've, mm -hmm. and I have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. And so from my perspective, if I'm going to teach mathematics, if it isn't good mathematics that's pushing the students as hard as they can be pushed, then it's not Christian education. See, Christian education has got to be good education because if it's not, it's not Christian education. It's, it's, it's something else. You were very active in campus committees as well, just in part of the whole governance system of how an institution runs. What was the importance of that to you and to the campus? It helped me understand how the campus ran in terms of how do we work together? And uh, as, as I had reflected on that over the years, I thought, there's only one committee I never served on. I never served on rank and tenure, but I, I served on every other committee on campus. And one of them I really enjoyed, I think, was Academic Standards Committee. Yeah. And that committee kind of sets the tone across campus in terms of how the academics works. Now, I also learned a lot. You know, um, I learned that uh, early on that Tom Thompson doesn't always, always have the best ideas, you know? <laughs> there are plenty of other very smart people on campus. <laughs> When you retired, you know, we often have a, a little party of some kind to celebrate a retirement. But you hired a Dixieland band to play 
at your last class. How did, tell me about this. This was quite a momentous occasion, I think. Well, I thought, okay, for the last class, I'm going to go out with a bang. They're going to remember this. So <laughs> I did. I, I hired a, a, a Dixieland band to play When the Saints Go Marching In. I put on my academic regalia, and I taught my last class nice. in that. Just before I went in to teach that class, that's when I, I had this band play, and we went down Kretschmar Hall. I wanted to go the full length mm -hmm. of the Kretschmar Hall on mm -hmm. third floor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to disrupt absolutely okay. as many people as possible. <laughs> I timed it just when classes began, you know, the hour mm -hmm. that the class was supposed to begin so that it would be disruptive. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you don't you don't want to do things like that in the in between in between classes because nothing happens and you got to be disruptive. That that's that's how you fix things in people's minds. Nice. It will not be forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. So, what do you hope for your students? I want to sell mathematics you know you can't cram it into people's heads that, that I mean that's that's a mm -hmm. that's a silly thing to say mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I want to sell it I want to get them excited about it if I can mm -hmm. that involves pulling all the tools that you have getting students to ask questions I mean that's lecturing is is, is fine, but you need to have interaction with students. I wanna, I wanna sell them on the idea that this, what they're in the classroom, this is something that they can take with them and it's mm -hmm. useful mm -hmm. and they can use it later on. You know, you, you find out there are a lot of stories out there, the students that, that come, they have lots of different stories and some students have painful stories mm -hmm. where they come from. Mm -hmm. And you try to be a person who can help that in some way. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, point them mm -hmm. in a direction that may be helpful. It, it really is a part of being in Christian education, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I can do that yeah. here. Yeah. And and That's I right. and I can't I can't always do that on another campus. Mm -hmm. I can say, you know, you can have prayer with a student in mm -hmm. an office mm -hmm. setting. I've mm -hmm. done that mm -hmm. many, sure. many, many times. Yeah, right. Uh, that I can do. Not everybody mm -hmm. is comfortable with that, mm -hmm. but I'm comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. I try not to to overdo it because I want it to be me. I want yeah, it to be right. real right. because that's important to me. Right. What makes a good teacher? Well, you've got to like your subject, first of all. You've got to like what you're doing. And I think you've got to like people. Yes. I felt like, boy, I've got to be prepared. These students are, are paying a lot mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. The family is. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going into debt. Mm -hmm. It's my job to give them absolutely their money's mm -hmm. worth. Mm -hmm. And I've got to do that. Mm -hmm. So I have to study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have to interact with mathematics. You can't just, well, I'm going to teach the rest of my life. You've got to be able to look students yeah. in the eye yeah. and you've got to say, do you know how you can use this theorem? Let yeah. me show you how you can use it. And every once in a while, that will click with a student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you could imagine the very best day, what does a good day look like? A good day is when I could actually remember my entire lecture, <laughs> so I didn't have to refer to my notes. Yes. But take, for instance, calculus. The day I looked forward to was the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, mm. that was a good day because I would start that day every year, every time I taught Calc 1, which fundamental theorem shows up in Calc 1, I would dress up in some kind of garb, in some kind of setting, usually have some kind of a musician or something with me, mm -hmm. and we would enter the classroom 
and I would use a voice of whatever I thought was appropriate to present the fundamental theorem of calculus. And students would remember that kind of a thing. But for me, it's when you get the students engaged in a theorem, in a proof, mm -hmm. when you get students asking questions. I was the luckiest guy on earth to yes. get to do what I got to do. Yes. And the good Lord made it possible for me to do this for over 40 years. And, you know, I just would do it all over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little late now. <laughs> but, but if given the same set of circumstances, I would just, I would do it again. <laughs>